Hey everybody, namaste, welcome back to another food making session after yoga. Um, so I just came back from the park after filming some more sessions today and again I'm super hungry. But there was a lot of backbending and um, balancing in that session as well as breathing, breath work. So backbending and balancing and breath work always have a calming and sedated kind of effect like you're stoned um, so I'm feeling pretty relaxed right now and so we're just gonna go ahead and get some food ready so when I was walking here I thought we have I have some broccoli in the fridge my wife bought some broccoli the other day and I feel like having something maybe with nutritional yeast so let's see what's gonna happen First things first, let's get our quinoa um, ready on the stove. So let me get a pot. And my mic was off that entire time, but that's okay. It shouldn't, it shouldn't make a difference because the camera is so close anyway. Uh, but I turned the mic on now, so let's get a pot. And of course, any everything, as with the other two videos, um, is unedited and it's just everything is in real time. Um, if you do want to check out the videos that I've filmed just now, um, I'll post a link somewhere after they've been uploaded, but most likely this video will be uploaded before the other videos, just to keep it in a time sequence, maybe. Uh, so we'll see. So on a pot, put your pot on, turn the stove on, put your pot on high, and let's find where we put that quinoa. Quinoa. So in the other video, um, I think the first one of this, I used half the bag. And so we'll just go ahead and use the other half. So this, the bag was 500 grams. So that was 250 grams of quinoa, approximately, I, I don't know. And in the other video, I made it with the soy and maple syrup. Here, I'm just going to toast it and dry. So just to, let me move you down so you can see a little bit more. So um, this is just quinoa in a pot that's dry. There's no water in it yet. And we'll just let that toast a bit. Well, in the meantime, let's soak our cashews. So um, let me move this up. So we're going to start by boiling some water. So take your hot water kettle or whatever you use to heat up water. You can use a microwave if you don't have a kettle. Just put a cup in water. Just put a water in a cup and then microwave it. Uh, let's get a cup from here. Let's get some cashews. And we'll put about... I don't know. Quarter a cup of cashews. Not too much. Um, usually I'll make a lot of it, but right now I don't. I just feel for something small and intimate, you know. So just a quarter cup of cashews. And we'll twist around our quinoa a bit. Okay. The kettle smells like butter or it smells like ghee. I don't know, I don't know why, but I smell ghee right now. So while that's going, uh, we'll get our broccoli out. No, we'll get our garlic out actually. Where is our garlic? Uh, so we have a clove of garlic. And 
and we'll get a chili or so. One chili. I'm gonna have some coconut water. After any physical activity, coconut water always tastes real good. So we just have coconut water. Let's swirl this around. Water is boiling, so let me fill the cashew cup with hot water. Let that soak for a second. So let me tell you a bit about coconut water. Um, so yeah, so coconut water, like I said, it's always, it feels nice to drink it after any physical activity or any activity. Um, there's electrolytes in it, so if you sweat or moved at all, um, the electrolytes in the coconut water act to replenish your body. Also, just the smooth taste of it, there's something about that smoothness that just calms you out, so which is nice. And um, there's a bunch of potassium in coconut water. Oh. I believe there's more potassium in coconut water than a banana. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was five times more potassium in coconut water than in a banana. And potassium for all the med students who are watching or anyone who does science stuff or anything, uh, potassium is really important for nerve conduction, um, which our heart is a giant conductor of electricity. Our nerves running everywhere from our spinal cord to our peripherals, to, perif to our peripheral limbs and things. So it just keeps all that nice and fresh. So the quinoa is cackling away. Let me show you. So other than the fact that I feel really relaxed right now, the reason why I'm not moving so fast is because this is going to take the longest and everything else will be really fast, so it doesn't really matter. This is the quinoa now, so it looks a little bit more brown, tan brown, like summertime tan brown. Um, don't do this because it's hot, but um, you can look at it here. I'm not sure if the camera will focus. But it looks kind of toasty. And I'm just going to add the water now because the camera is going to die again. So um, I'm just going to add the water and let the battery charge for a little bit. And I won't do anything in the meantime because I won't have to do anything in the meantime. The chemo will take a while. So let's add the water in now and then I'll see you back when the battery charges a little bit more. Okay. So again, for the ratio, um, I think I mentioned it in the other video. Um, if the quinoa, let's say, let's move you to this. Maybe if I had a marker, I can draw on this wall. So if the quinoa is at this height above the pan, add add water. So it, it's add water. Um, so the level is about dub double. So if quinoa is, let's say, if the quinoa is at level one, add water. So everything is at level two. And then just cover it with a pot and um, cook it on mediumish heat. Just, just to save on electricity and water. So right now it's on high and I'm going to turn it down to medium setting and lid on. Okay, so I'm going to go charge the battery and I'll see you in a few minutes. Testing, okay, hey, so we're back and um, the battery's charged a little bit more. 
So like I said, I didn't do anything. The quinoa is just bubbling away. And it hardcore smells like peanut butter. Um, not almond butter, but definitely smells like peanut butter. And you guys might find if you're cooking quinoa, it smells like that. Um, the more you toast it in the beginning, like the more you dry roast it in the pan, the more it'll smell like, like a nut butter or peanut butter. And that's probably due to something, some reason or the other. Because <laughs> quinoa is a seed and uh, peanuts are nut. Um, my brother told me what the difference was between a nut and a seed before, but I forgot. So if you guys want to let me know in the comments below what the difference is between a seed and a nut. Okay, so let's get started on everything else before my camera dies again. Um, oh, I should mention too, while I, while I was chilling and drinking my coconut water, um, because the potassium in coconut water is so high, if, if you know anyone or if you have family members that have renal issues like kidney failure or any types of um, kidney problems, it's, it's probably best to check with a doctor, um, like a practicing doctor, to who, who can assess the lab values and just give some guidance about how much potassium to have in your diet. Because people with renal issues um, can develop, can have troubles with potassium levels. So just keep an eye out for that. So uh, let me show you what we're going to do now. Let's tilt this camera down. And I'm going to take this cup with cashew water and I'm going to strain it. So like I said that, like I said in the last video, the tripod is in the sink because that's the only place where I can put it right now. So I'm just going to strain it and you guys won't be able to see it. So there it is, strained cashews. And I'm just going to get a blender. Here's a blender. It it's, feels kind of strange, actually, to only use this much of cashews, because normally I would make a big batch. So it's kind of interesting feeling. So let's take our garlic, smash it. Put it in the blender. Okay, there, so there's, if you can see on the garlic, if the camera will focus, there's a little spot on it, like a brown spot. So we'll just cut that out. Knife, just cut it out. So garlic goes in, chili, I'll wash it. I don't remember if I washed it already. Oh, it fell down. I'll wash it again. Cut off the stem, chili in. What else do I want in here? Oh, okay, let's put some nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast uh, looks like this. It's yellow flakes. And for a person who doesn't eat meat, or is vegan or vegetarian, whatever, um, nutritional yeast is quite important, I guess, because um, it's yeast and it has B12, vitamin B12, that vegetarians or vegans won't normally get without eating meat. So, yeah. I kind of wanted more nutritional yeasty, so I'm going to add more nutritional yeast. Also, it's high in protein and umami flavor, blah, blah, blah. It just tastes really good. It kind of has like a cheesy, nutty flavor. So I like it. Let's check on our quinoa. Lid up. Oh, okay, bubbling. Okay, so if you take a look here, the quinoa looks done to me but there's still water in it. And 
So to deal with that, we'll just cook it now without the lid and turn it on high. That'll allow the water to evaporate without much more cooking um, having to happen. So lid off and we'll just turn it on high just to dry out that water. The quinoa cooked faster than I expected. Okay, and uh, to this we'll also add some salt and pepper. I'm tempted to add some olive oil to this. Um, but I'll just leave it as this, as is. And we'll see what happens. Oh, actually, you know what I should have done? I should have added miso instead of salt. Uh, next one. Okay, we'll just add some water to this. There's nothing in here. Okay, filter some more water. So afterwards, if, if when I blend it and I'll taste it, I'll see if it's salty. And if it's not too salty, then I'll add some miso to it. So if you saw earlier, I soaked the cashews, um, but like I do with most of my videos where I'm making something with cashews, but like realistically, if you have a high speed blender, you don't need to soak anything. The blender will just smooth everything up if it's high speed. This one is high speed, so I don't, I don't need to technically soak it. I just do it sometimes just because. Um, but if you have a normal blender, so this is a, a Ninja. Um, I used to use a Nutribullet before. Those are really high speed. If you just have a normal blender, uh, then definitely soak it for a long time. So let's get this water in. I don't know how much water that is. It's some amount. So I'm just gonna put the lid on. and blend it. So that was very loud. I'll uh, try to edit out, edit the sound and tone down the sound. So let's take it out, see what it is. And let's have a taste. Good ones, they don't, doesn't need salt or anything. Good, this is it. So finally, we'll get our broccoli going. Oh, let me just turn the quinoa. So quinoa is done, the water is dried up. And so we'll just put that to the side now. Let's get our broccoli going. So, ho, ho, ho. That's cute. It's three little stems of organic broccoli. All tied together. Let's see how many we're going to use. So in the meantime, I'm going to turn this pan on just for it to heat up. Okay, the camera's on low again. This is where it might die. If it dies, if it dies then um, hope you guys have a nice day. So broccoli has a ton of things going for it physically speaking and inside of it. It has a bunch of nutrients, leafy green. Physically it's cute. It has like a little, it looks like a little tree. So we'll just wash one for now. I'm probably gonna use two. 
wash it up. I'll get one more ready. Number two. So I have here two tiny trees of broccoli and um, we'll cut that up. I'll tilt the camera so you can have a look about how I'm going to cut it up. I'm sure you all know how to cut broccoli, but I guess for entertaining purposes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have a broccoli here, so I'm going to cut the base just a little bit. Just a little bit off. So I'm going to take it and then just cut off the flowers. Let me know how you guys cut broccoli because uh, my, my brother saw me cutting this before. And he looked kind of um, like this was something new, or a new way to cut it. So let me know how you guys cut broccoli. I'm not sure if you guys do it, but don't waste your stem. I, I don't know if people throw it away, but I've seen chefs on YouTube and stuff not use the stem. So don't throw it away. Okay, so our pan is dry now. We'll add some water to it. So we're just going to steam the broccoli. We're not, so we'll, we'll add in the stems first and then the flour. So I'll cut this one off so we can add the stems on both. The reason why I add the stems first is because um, it takes longer to soften up. You can eat the stems raw, mind you, but today I just want it a little bit steamed. So we'll just cut up the stems roughly like so. Chop, chop, chop. There's an episode in, on Simpsons where um, Homer is going chop, chop. Dig, dig, chop, chop, dig, dig. And I saw it when I was really young and it still sticks with me. So we'll put those stems in. And we won't add salt or anything to this. I won't add any coconut oil either because the cashews has enough fat on its own, enough good fat. I kind of actually don't like that term, good fat or bad fat. It just, they're all different, for different situations, different scenarios, something can be one thing. Different amount, something can be one thing, you know, all different. Okay, so, um, well actually, actually, let me bring you here. So that's broccoli, stem steaming. And when it cooks, it gets, when it uh, hits the heat, it goes a more vibrant green. And that's what I want to keep it at. I don't want it to go past that vibrant green. So stems are there. We'll add in our florets. And this is something that doesn't take long, like, now that the floor is in, I won't leave it in for more than a few minutes. And just steam it. We'll take our quinoa lid and just put it on. A steam it. So in the meantime, let's cut up some other vegetables to eat. Let's use, um, actually not, I'll just take a lemon. We'll just squeeze a lemon over it. That's enough vegetables. So we have a lemon here. So just squeeze it so inside you release the juices from all the wedges. So when you cut it, it'll be easier to take all, all the juice. Okay, let's uncover that broccoli. Give it a little mix. Yeah, 
So yeah, that's done. So as soon as this water is dried up, which is it's all pretty much dried up, it's, it's done. So we'll take our knife, cut a slice, a little wedge of lemon, and we'll get ready to plate it. So again, we'll take our little uh, bowl here we used in the last video. Move this to the side. We'll turn off the stove. Okay, we get some quinoa. So in the quinoa, it's not seasoned. There's no salt, there's nothing. It's just plain quinoa. Okay, some quinoa. Yeah, that's all right. Some broccoli. So if you, as you can see, it's very, it's very vibrant green right now. It's barely cooked at all. Take that on. And I'll, I'll add some pumpkin seeds to this because just to, maybe I'll add some pumpkin seeds just to give it that extra um, protein. Even though the quinoa has enough protein as is. Quinoa on its own, I believe, is a complete protein, which if you check out um, the other video I made, I kind of briefly explained what a complete protein was. And we'll take our cashew sauce here and then just lightly drizzle it over. Cool, and we'll take a lemon wedge, squeeze it over. Not waste any juice here. And just to give it some blackness, let's get some pepper. There we go. So there it is. And let me bring you back up. So again, my camera's gonna die soon. I'm surprised it lasted this long. Um, but here it is. Uh, quinoa, broccoli with a cashew nutritional yeast sauce. Pumpkin seeds, I don't know, I'll add it while I'm eating it if I feel like it. But here it is. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. And again, I hope you guys enjoy it if you do make it. If you if you have no intention of making it. Um, I saw the, the battery died, but I charged it for a few seconds because I needed to take a picture of the thumbnail. Uh, I needed to take a picture of the food for the thumbnail for this video. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, um, if you didn't watch to make anything, if you have no intention of making it, hope you enjoyed just watching anyway. And I'll see you next time. Namaste.